welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today if this is your first time here first things first like and subscribe to my channel and I hope to be more active on here but today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been getting quite a bit of question on I actually got a question on it this morning so I figured why not just come on here and do a, a little video and talk about it um, so today I'm going to be talking about my journey with my breast augmentation. Yes, I got my boobs done last year in August. And listen, if you haven't noticed, then you need some glasses because your girl went from a size B to a triple D. So yes, I've had a few people ask me, you know, a lot of questions. I wanted to come in here and answer all of them. Now, this is 2021. I am not hiding that I had breast augmentation done. I am not hiding or trying to pretend that I was born with a, you know, 34 triple D size. No, 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 no. That's just in right. So I'm gonna spill the tea and answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me in the past. Last year, I got my breast augmentation done and I actually went to a doctor in Utah. So I live in Utah. I know a lot of people won't wanna give you the information for the surgeons because they don't want to be referring you. So just to state very clearly, I am not referring or recommending this doctor. I am just simply stating that this is the doctor that performed my procedure. I got my procedure done at um, Vincent Surgical um, by Dr. Vincent in, I think it's Midville, Salt Lake area, somewhere there. Um, and honestly, I had a really good experience going over there. Um, so the way that things work, you have like your first consultation where you go in, you meet with a nurse who goes over, you know, with sizing, what to expect from a breast implant and a whole bunch of things. So I had my consultation and because I already pretty much had decided I was going to get my boobs done, you know, it wasn't something I wanted to think about. So the day I had my consultation, that same day I was able to schedule my surgery for I think the, the following week. Um, before you get breast augmentation done, it's very important that you do your research so you know exactly what you're getting into. It's not a one size fit all um, type of situation. So it's very important that you do some research, um, figure out what, what it is you really want to achieve and then kind of go with it. First question I'm going to answer is whether I got the saline or silicone implant. So I got the silicone. And I'll tell you guys why I did silicone as opposed to saline. Now, saline is basically salt and water. You know, we all know this and we all know what silicone is. So let me just dive right into it. Now, the reason I chose to go with silicone as opposed to saline is silicone is not as likely to break as saline is. And for your implants to break, it's got to be some sort of crazy force that would have been applied. But for me, I felt like, you know, saline will more likely break easier than the silicone. So just to be on the safer side of not breaking or avoiding breakage, I decided to go with silicone. Well, the, the con of going to silicone as opposed to saline is if it happens that your silicone breaks, it's a lot more dangerous for your silicone to break in your body, especially if it goes a long time unnoticed, you could have complications. I used to wear a 34B bra, but now I wear 34 triple D for push-up t-shirt bras, and then I just wear the 34 double D for a regular full coverage bra. I found that it just works the best that way for me. Um, so I got 470, I think I got 470 cc's on both breasts because I told her like what I wanted my size to be a double D or a triple D. So that's exactly what they gave me, a triple slash double D. Now let's talk about cost. This is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. I don't know why it's such a big secret. Like people don't want to talk about like how much they got their boobs done. I mean... It's whatever. He paid $5,300 for my boob job. Um, again, the price changes with time. Sometimes they have promotions. They had a promotion when I had mine done. And I think that they may have raised the price after then. Um, but that is what I personally paid for mine. I know that you can get like these surgeries in other places for more expensive or for cheaper. Just make sure that you research the doctor doing your procedure. Um, 
but yeah make sure that you do your research before going into any surgery at all super big question i get is about recovery like how was the recovery you know what was it like now i will say for everybody it's kind of different it's different for a lot of people now when i had my surgery they told me full recovery will take up to a year so after my surgery i came home obviously i was all drugged up i went straight to sleep and when i woke up i was actually able to take a 30 minute walk that day it was very slow i had my husband there just to make sure i wasn't dizzy or i wasn't gonna fall over um, but I was able to take a walk on my first day the day of my surgery literally I was able to do pretty much everything myself a lot of people cannot raise your arms after their surgery I was able to raise my arm above my head just fine I know someone who had your surgery and for the first three two to three days she wasn't able to get anything done she wasn't able to even like flush the toilet herself so it's very very different different for everyone I did need help like sitting up like when you lay down because you, you're laying on your back most of the time I needed help like sitting up so my husband would like put some support and help me sit up a lot of times now I actually could do this on my own it just hurt or was uncomfortable and my husband would help me like sit up when I you know lay on the bed because you have to sleep on your back for a little bit he would be able to help me sit up um, yeah he was able to help me with a few things here and there but for the most part I feel like I was able to get around and get stuff done. I was on pain medication, it really helped with my pain. I was on mu muscle relaxant as well. And I, I don't remember what else I was given. But yeah, like my pain level, I felt like was very manageable. In fact, after like a week, I was like lifting my little um, niece, which I know I was not supposed to do, but I'm just making a point that I had ability to do so. I was not supposed to do that, so I'm not telling you to do that, but I did do that. It was her birthday and I was helping with a lot of things and I, I just couldn't avoid it. As far as like going to the gym, I wasn't able to go to the gym for, I think, after a couple weeks, I think, or less than, or a little bit more than that, I was able to get back to the gym. Now, I was told to watch my heart rate, so I was, you know, I was just doing things like walking on a treadmill, you know, like the Stairmaster, just something that wasn't too difficult for me. Again, there are other doctors that will tell you to not go to the gym until like three months after your surgery, but it just depends. For me, my doctor told me that it was safe to do very, very light exercise, and so I was not lifting any weights whatsoever. I was just walking in the treadmill doing the stair master just trying to keep my body you know going now some of the things i wish that i knew before my surgery i wish i would have known these things before my surgery the thing number one after your surgery when you were on those pain medications you experience a crazy amount of bloating and you cannot take a dookie for a hot minute <laughs> At least I was not able to take a dookie for a hot minute. Um, I think it was like a couple of days. I was just extremely bloated. I could pee and whatnot, but I was just like so backed up. For some reason, the pain medication will make you very constipated, very bloated. And so I was like, oh my goodness, I am not ready for this. I was thinking my body would just look like snatched right away. But girl, no. I was looking like I was four or five, six months pregnant for the first few days, for the first few weeks, actually. Um, so that was very, very like difficult and weird for me because I would look at myself in the mirror and I would just be like, oh my gosh, like I look ugly, I look fat, you know, all these horrible things to myself. But unfortunately, that was the reality. I was very bloated for a few weeks, actually until I was done taking my pain medications um, and muscle relaxant and whatever else they gave me, I don't remember. Um, it took a while for my body to get back to normal. I wasn't as constipated or bloated and I started to feel you know, like myself. Another thing that was really, really difficult was falling asleep. So you have to sleep on your back I'm a side sleeper, so for me to sleep on my back was just so incredibly difficult for some reason. It was just uncomfortable, so I couldn't get good sleep because I was just so uncomfortable. And after like maybe, I think after my two week follow up, I was told that I could now start sleeping on my side. But what I notice is when I sleep on my side, when I wake up, the boob that I'm sleeping on will be like hard, like rock hard. It was. It was almost like painful and uncomfortable. It would just be like rock hard just for me sleeping on the side. 
Um, so that was one thing I just wasn't expecting that my boobs would feel so hard, you know, just from sleeping on the side. But again, they tell you these massages that you need to do. You definitely want to massage, 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 follow the instructions, just how you were told to do it. Just make sure that you do it, do your massages, do your stretches. Very, very, very important. Because I did those a lot in the beginning and my boobs were able to like soften like quicker compared to like some other people. Um, because when you first get it done, it's, it's just rock hard there and you have to just keep like massaging. I will not go over massages because that's not my place to do so. Um, but make sure that you do your stretches and your massages as often as you know was recommended. Another thing I wish I would have known, even though I was advised this by the doctor, but I just felt like, eh, I don't really need it. But using like heat pad and eyes alternatively, alternatively, oh my gosh, I cannot say that word. Honestly, once I started doing it, heat and eyes, it was like magic. Like my pain just went away. The discomfort was like improved significantly. That is something you should definitely consider doing as soon as your doctor recommends it to you or says that it's safe to use heat and ice pack for this goes because trust me you will thank me later another thing i wish that i knew before my surgery is your nipple sensitivity when you first get your surgery your nipples just not there it's gone <laughs> you can't feel it you can't there's no sensation whatsoever so that was so weird to me at first because i thought like okay i'm gonna feel there's something underneath but, you know, I should be able to feel my nipples still, at least a little bit, but no, nothing, absolutely nothing. I was not able to feel my nipples for a little while, maybe like six months or so. I wasn't able to feel anything, um, but eventually the sensation is starting to come back. Now, the most important thing they never tell me <laughs> is that you would continue to feel that sensitivity on your nipple for a really long time. My surgery has been almost a year now and my nipple is still very sensitive my nipples are still very sensitive so that's something that i had no idea they should have told me about from day one but nope they didn't another thing that oh my gosh i wish i would have known is your working out change is i'm sorry you're not going to be able to work out the same after getting your boob job let me tell you i used to be able to do at least like 20 push-ups yo I can't even do one push up right now. <laughs> like, I cannot even do a single push up. I can do it on my knees a little bit, maybe two to three, but like the full blown push ups, forget it. Pull ups, just don't think about it. It's, it's over. It's over for you, girl. It's over. Now, you use your pec muscles for a lot of exercises. I didn't even realize. There was a lot of exercises that I engaged my pec muscles, but I had no idea until after I got my surgery and I'm like, whoa, wait, I can't even do my push-up. It's just impossible. I can't explain it. I don't know if it's discomfort. I don't know if it's pain. I just am not able to do it at all. So bye-bye push-ups, bye-bye pull-ups. Sucks to see you go, but I'm going to see you in the next world. Your dresses will not fit anymore. And this is what I mean. If previously you used to wear like a size six dress, honey, you might need to start wearing a size eight because guess what? Your boob part might not fit and the rest of your body will fit or vice versa. Since I got my boobs done, I've had to wear bigger, go up a size in my shirt. And a lot of my dresses, I have to buy a little bit bigger so that I can accommodate for the girls. That's something nobody ever warned me about, girl. No one told me about this. Let's it stretchy, girl. Go a size up and thank me later. Oh, I need to mention this. I did put my implants underneath my muscle so that I will be able to breastfeed. That was one of the questions that I had from my doctor. Like, okay, I don't want to just try to be looking cute and not be able to breastfeed my babies. And I was told that I would be totally okay to breastfeed as long as I put the implants underneath my muscle, which is what I did. I haven't had any complications whatsoever. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I try to go over those questions that I've been getting very often. So if you guys have any additional questions, just make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. I will try to um, answer everything. I will try to answer all the questions best I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more good stuff. All right, guys. Bye.